Oh, <laughs> okay. Now we're recording. Hello, virtual people. I'm Abigail. And I'm Nicole. You're frozen for me right now, Nicole, but I know you're frozen too. Oh no! <laughs> okay, hopefully it doesn't record frozen, you know. Well, we tried to do this for like at least an hour now. Um, so we're yeah. really, we're really invested. <laughs> we really want to get this information out there. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're finally here doing the dang thing. Okay, so I guess we can just go ahead and start. We're going to be talking about herbs for women. If you didn't pick up on that already. Um, and I want to start with just talking about the cycle itself before we dive into what herbs will be good for it, because I think it's essential to know what's going on with our cycle before we just take something at, at some time. Um, so basically, there's, there's two ways to look at the cycle. There's um, a way to break it up into two, two phases, and that's going to be the, can you hear me, Nicole? I can hear you, yeah. That's going to be the follicular phase and then the luteal phase. And um, that's the more kind of scientific way of looking at it with the fluctuation of the hormones. So the follicular phase is going to be the first part. So that is starting when we menstruate. Um, right once we begin to menstruate, our, our, all of our hormones drop fully. They like go all the way down to the bottom of our hormone fluctuation. And um, as we go on a little bit more and a little bit more with the follicular phase, our estrogen starts to really rise up and becomes the dominant hormone during this phase. And by the time around-ish, day 14, let's say if you have a 28-day cycle, all of your hormones kind of peak here. Estrogen and um, testosterone and progesterone does a little peak, but then it goes into the luteal phase where progesterone takes over and this is, and then estrogen really drops. And this is where we might start to feel PMS symptoms. We might start to feel like hormonal, people say, and sad and whatever comes with that. Um, and uh, that goes for about 14 days. This is the one that's like permanent though. It's gonna be 13, 14, 15 days. And the follicular phase can, can fluctuate and change in day amounts, but you'll always ovulate 13, 14, 15 days before you menstruate. So if you can keep track of your cycle, that's good to know that you're always ovulating and your um, luteal phase is always going to stay the same. And then I like to look at the cycle in the other way, which is going to be breaking up into four parts. So yeah, that's, that's breaking up like you do seasons. Um, this has been like a super a way to really look at my cycle and start to love it and recognize what's going on. So there's your spring, your summer, your fall, and your winter. And some people will say there's different, you know, some people will say um, different parts of our cycle is correlated to different seasons. But I really like to go with, um, it's winter when you're bleeding. And shortly after that, it's springtime. And your estrogen is really starting to get higher and you're feeling kind of, you know, springy and like a bunny rabbit and getting pretty horny. <laughs> and then when you ovulate, it's like your summer, you're full on summer, you're blooming, you want to say yes to everything and like everything is so exciting. And then comes our fall phase or our P PMS, we might call it, maybe society's like favorite phase to pick on and we're beginning to sh really shed and hunker down for our winter phase, which is our menstruation. Yeah, I love that. That's beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope that- I love that. I've never heard like that all described in that way before, so that's cool. Yeah, I love looking at in the seasons because I think it's so much easier to, um, to like see our body, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's more of like a tangible thing, like we understand what the seasons are, so. Yeah, it is tangible. And then maybe like, you know, we can recognize more if we're feeling like really down at some parts of the month, but maybe it's like just when we're in our fall time. 
but yeah yeah it's a good thing to recognize definitely yeah I hope that um this recording is actually getting our faces in in like real time because there's yeah I hope so because you're like it's like in and out with you okay yeah like static -y, yeah but I can hear everything you're saying really well so yeah me too um cool so along with before getting into herbs and everything like that just talking about honoring and kind of where our cycle came from and how we look at it now versus how we used to look at it um which was women when we were on our periods and had our cycle we were pushed out of our homes and pushed out of our communities and put in an like isolation um for like seven to ten days and in that isolation we had other women come to us with food and with water and with um, blankets and pillows and community and conversation um, and that was how our cycle was looked at granted the reason why we were out of the house was because it was looked at as almost a dirty thing and so I think that um, along with what you said like shedding those layers of how it used to be with how it is today um, but I do think that that is like a beautiful ritual to have the women be a bit in isolation you know and be with their femininity and be with their blood really because that is our life force that is something and the only thing that is able to perpetuate life um, and so I think really hunkering down and identifying with the things that bring us um, gratitude the people that we want to be around um, even just spending one day while we're on our cycle really nourishing ourselves and being around people that nourish us is a really really great way to like go back to our roots because women in our lineage doesn't matter who you are where you came from um, it's definitely something that was a part of their lives. So in that aspect of honoring it and being with it um, and not thinking of it as a nuisance or something that is just in the way, um, because it's not, you know, it's something that all women are a part of and it's something that can bring us deeper into community. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I wanna say something to that, that like, I, I read, you know, we read a lot as people that women have, have always been kind of shamed and like, go to the, just go to the tent while you're bleeding, you're gross, you know, you can't come into mm -hmm. this sweat lodge because you're bleeding or whatever it is, but um, I really don't believe that, at least in matriarchal societies, that it was looked at that way, but, you know, mm -hmm. who were the writers who were writing the stuff down that we were reading, the, the people who were keeping, um, yeah. It, we're all men, you know, and, and so maybe their view of it was a little bit more tainted, but we know now yeah. that like women don't go and gather with each other when we're bleeding because we feel shameful or because we feel yeah. gross. Like we do it because we're like, fuck yes, like let's Absolutely, get together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that, yeah. And I think that's like exactly what you said. Like that's an important thing to know is like who was writing the script for us years and years ago before we had a, a big voice, you know. So that is something definitely to know who, how much of it is like truth and how much of it was like women didn't get a say in that. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, awesome, cool. So do you have any like specific herbs that you like to to do for honoring? Um, I do. So I'm actually on my cycle right now. So I thought that was like, Me too. Cool. oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, so then yeah, with that, um, I love red raspberry. That's probably my favorite herb for women in general, but specifically, um, during the cycle and everything. So I use a lot of like red raspberry and chamomile. Um, I've been using a little bit of like peppermint as well. I really like the taste of it um in a tea form and I noticed that that helps so much with like cramping um and in general just if you ever look at like a red raspberry plant like it's just has like this like fruiting little like squishy body and it's just such like a feminine like sexy plant yeah um, it is definitely one of my favorite herbs for women in general but definitely like 
all through the years of like menstruation and whatnot. So what about you? Yeah. And pregnancy too, that herb is, is yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I gotta give it up to Rose for when I'm actually bleeding and roses gotta be one of my favorites and it's more of an energetic healer for that. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I use specific herbs to help like with, I get cramps a lot. So I use like wild yam, but Rose has been so special to like help bring, um, ritual and ceremony and honor to my cycle because now now just when I, I have rose around or I wear its scents on me or I'll like buy myself flowers or love drinking rose tea when I'm bleeding just to like give myself that little extra love, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think rose is like such that plant too of love, you know, like love from you to another and especially love like from yourself to yourself. So that's it's awesome. It's such a feminine one, you know, it's like this yeah, super like, I don't even know. It's like this wise woman, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you can even like, you open up a flower and it's like, like the rose, it looks like the vagina. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <I definitely. laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I have a little asterisk share tea here. If we were in person, we were going to do that. But one day, yeah. one day when this apocalypse kind of dwindles out. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. Do you, what herbs do you use like for your cycle, like for cramping? And I know you mentioned wild yam. Yeah, and um, I love also love ginger. Like just having some ginger tea mm. can really help me with cramping. Yeah. Um, wild yam. But I use this tincture that has wild yam, motherwort. Motherwort's one of my favorites mm -hmm. for bleeding. Um, black cohosh. Um, yes. And I think right now it just has those three in it. The ones that I'm using. Nice. I love yeah. that combination. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know that, like, um, at least, like, my experience with Black Cohosh has been, like, such a mood elevator in times of yeah feeling really low during my cycle and stuff, and using Mother Wart and Black Cohosh for that has, like, really been able to, like, regulate my mood a lot better. Um, and I always get all my symptoms, like, days before my cycle. While I'm on my period, I just feel, like, bloated and, like, a lot of water retention yeah um, but a lot of like the physical and like brain pain I guess comes like in the days before and that's when I really love like black cohosh, motherwort, mm -hmm. wild yam, even or like have you used um like uva ursi before at all? I haven't I haven't used uva ursi yeah that's something I haven't really like touched on either it was something I wrote down um what was it? Oh, that it's like um, specific for like bladder and uterine toning and stuff. So if you're having like, what I'm imagining is like, like a almost like inflamed like uterine wall or something like that. I know sometimes women have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so many herbs you can use for different reasons. Like, um, what we're still kind of talking about honoring I want to talk about yarrow because this is yeah. I use yarrow at a different phase of my cycle like when I'm not bleeding I use yarrow when I'm um, ovulating which yes is, is yes um, and yeah I love yarrow um, I love yarrow yeah me as well. come to realize that yarrow has this is definitely more of like an energetic thing I seem to talk about this a lot with herbs but like yarrow has this super strong boundaries and I realized when I take mm -hmm. it my boundaries are, are enhanced so much and then like I said earlier when you're ovulating you're so like yes 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 to everything and it can be fun and awesome but then you can be like outdoing yourself and you can be going and doing way too much shit and yeah relaxing. yeah taking a little bit of yarrow and just enhancing your boundaries and like <laughs> them and knowing that you don't have to do everything yeah yeah because like, sometimes it can feel like that I totally agree yeah yeah and again like with the energetics I love talking about that with herbs and I love yarrow as well so it's like super fun but yarrow is like 
really connected to Venus, which is like the planet of like love and goddess and femininity. And it's just yeah. like a beautiful way to like just wrap it all together and be able to take that. So, and it's really nice in like six baths and stuff too. Yara's is really astringent for like tightening up your your walls and whatnot. So I really love yarrow. Super applicable. Yeah. And I think we should, while we're just talking about herbs, talk about Vitex. Um, yeah. Okay. So tell me, yeah, I want to know your thoughts on Vitex. Okay. So Vitex um, is amazing. And I just saw it, by the way, in the Sonoran Desert. I did not know that it no was way. a local plant until recently. And I saw it and I was just like, ah! That's I, awesome. I know. I didn't um, realize that either. Yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. So Vitex, though, it really helps to balance the progesterone and raise it. So in our day and age, most people who have hormonal imbalances, most people are um, suffering with like a, an estrogen dominant thing mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the shit that we're taking in every day with maybe meat and plastics and all the chemicals. We have a lot yeah. of heavy estrogen people. And so Vitex is really good for American women because it helps to raise progesterone and then, you know, bring us more to equilibrium in our hormonal cycle. And so it's really, really wonderful for balancing our hormones and all of these symptoms that can come around with bleeding or PMSing, there's like hundreds and hundreds probably, but most of them can be linked back to hormonal issues. And mm -hmm. of course we can cover up the symptoms like I'm doing right now. I'm taking wild yam because I'm like, my cramps are too much. <laughs> like that bark, whatever, you know, but, um, getting to the bottom of, of why you're experiencing cramps or why you're experiencing these serious yeah. hormonal infection or fluctuations, like, yeah, Vitex can be really wonderful for that. Just balancing your hormones kind of like a, in the back, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I love that. And just to touch on that as well, I know that, um, two things with Vitex. So I started taking Vitex right after I got my IUD taken out because my hormones were all over the place. And, oh. um, I mean, that's like a really, really good time to start taking Vitex too. And from what I do know about Vitex, it's one of those herbs that has to be taken for like a really long period of time, like three, six, nine months before you really start seeing like your hormones change and, you know, start regulating and stuff because it is like so crazy. So to like finally find that, that like balance wave. Um, but man, I just, I really, really loved it. Like I was taking it daily and I just noticed like, I mean, what seemed to me be like pretty immediate changes after like four to six weeks, I was like, oh, really, awesome. really feeling good. So that's like something to keep in mind with Vitex as well. And I know people have used it with like, um, like I've seen it in blends with like black cohosh and sage, um, for women who are going through like menopause and stuff too. So that's really yeah. Yeah. Versatile or not. Um, yeah, I was sorry. I was going to say something else. I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. Motherwort. I just I saw the word motherwort on my piece of paper. And she's such a wonderful plant for all, like pretty much all women, it seems like. You know, whether you're bleeding yeah. or you're not or you're young or especially if you had just had a baby. I mean, that's huge because it's this yeah. like mothering plant for the mothers, right? It's called motherwort, which means wort, I think, means herb. It's, yeah. Yeah. So it means like, you know, mother herb. Yeah. I think I read too somewhere. It's like, it mothers the woman who wasn't mothered is like yeah. how it was like worded. Yeah, you know? I know that. Maybe it, yeah. that was Rosemary Gladstar, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like super great. I'm like, that's just why would you not want to? What everyone needs that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. So wonderful. So and it's heart medicine, which is beautiful. I mean, yeah, I love the medicines that like are are for both things or for multiple things and for it to be mm -hmm. womb and heart medicine is so powerful and beautiful. Like, yeah, yeah. Like it really is like, yeah, I love that. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. 
And um, oh, same with like red clover, you know, even though it isn't like, it kind of has like the same affinity as rose does in a lot of ways. Like it just has that, you look at it and it makes you feel good, you know? And it's like mm -hmm. the same thing as rose, like you're around it and that like the, the vibrancy of that plant like really comes out when you take it. Um, I think as well and it's a really good herb for I don't know do you ever use it for like um for like on your period or pain or anything like that I've never used that for, for no mm -mm. okay I've used it um not for me personally but I've had like other friends use it and they said it really like balances out the viscosity so sometimes women have like really thick um, menstrual blood and sometimes it's like really watery and thin and even the color variation like really dark to really light um, red clover blossoms like balance that out to have it be more of like a regular color regular texture I guess as well um, so I'm just like a personal note I guess yeah that's awesome yeah um, so Maybe we can talk about like specific symptoms. So we talked about pain, like dysmenorrhea. I'm um, getting yeah. to the bottom of that. It might be Vitax or however you want to balance. But oh, yeah, cover up the pain. Like definitely wild yam and cramp bark have been my face for that. It's yeah. I struggle with like some serious um, cramps. So yeah, when I'm having it and I just want to get rid of the cramps, I take big doses of wild yam and cramp bark tinctures. Yeah. Maybe one day at work with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. And um, I remember what I was going to say now with like the hormones and regulating. Like I love that. I love that you said this because it really is not about the pain. And to some extent, it's like the hormones play such a big role. But then it's like why the hormones? And then we're able to look at like what we're doing in our lives that bring that out of us and what I found in my life and I'm sure this is applicable for a lot of other women is like our diet and really our diet yeah. like days before our cycle and it's so been pushed on us that it's like cravings and you're craving sweets and chocolate and like really things that like aren't the healthiest for you and then we get our cycle and our cycle hits and we're and like agonizing pain and our back hurts and our muscles hurt and then we would resort back to like well let's take aspirin you know and then it's, it's really the same thing as like let's take this one thing to help with this versus let's eat healthy you know while we're ovulating before our cycle um and, and doing it that way like really like preventative measures um so that way like this doesn't happen you know and that's like the ideal thing is to not because although herbs are great and like we want to take them when we can it's not something that has to be or necessarily should be taken you know like four or five six times a day every single day for the rest of our lives you know yeah totally so if we're able to like fix our diet and not even necessarily fix but just I think like implement more I know like eating more like iron and like seaweeds iodine like calcium like really good for yeah. um balancing Magnesium. out your hormones yeah what were you think? Oh, I just said magnesium, and I love that. It's such yeah. a such a good point because, yeah, herbs. If you use them like that, it's just it's just like covering up the symptoms. You know, I love what Sage of Popham says about how allopathic versus holistic. You know, we don't want to go at herbalism with that allopathic view of just like, mm -hmm. okay, so now cramp bark and wild yam are good for covering up my cramps. So I don't yeah. care about why I have cramps. I'm going to keep eating pizza and cheese before. Yeah. yeah. You just take wild yam every time. Like, no, yeah. because your body, oh, this is something. Um, our, our menstrual cycle is, is a vital sign. I mean, it is telling us right. it is such a great source of understanding oh, I love what's happening that. with our body. So if Absolutely. we just cover up the symptoms and don't listen, that's the issue. I mean, um, when we can hear our, our body speak through our pain in our cramps or our headaches or back mm -hmm. pain or whatever it is, you know, it's telling us like something and then we have need to listen rather than just cover it up with herbs. I mean, herbs right. are great, but they can help you heal on a deeper level 
and they can also just be like a shitty ibuprofen kind of thing yeah no I totally agree like I think that is like such like the monument of like why herbalism exists you know and like why it's important to like continue on with like the education of it because exactly that you know like and even I'm like hopping all over the place but like you know your body is so intelligent and like you're taking wild yam like all the time when you have your cycle it's eventually like your body is going to build up some sort of resistance to this and you're gonna have to incorporate something else and it's really powerful to be able to like investigate why you want to take something else and what that looks like even you know so yeah I love that yeah totally yeah um there was something um I just kind of wanted to say this so if anyone wanted to like jot it down um rosemary gladstar had a hormonal regulating tea um which really has like everything that we were talking about plus a couple other herbs um which was wild yam ginger dandelion root burdock root vitex yellow dock sassafras which i never really used sassafras for cramps or anything like that before and um licorice root so have you ever used sassafras at all i have not used it for the cycle but um what the i love the ingredients in that because yeah okay you said dandelion root and yellow dock and burdock burdock right? mm -hmm. that's awesome because that's that's talking about your liver right and yeah that oh, is where this. our yeah. hormones are are um like this is where i'm looking for like moved through you know our liver is 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 processing our yes hormones. yes yes and so that is super important to um to take care of when it comes to like actually having a good hormone cycle so i love that there's liver herbs in that tea that's yeah awesome. it also yeah no our liver heard. also produces like building blocks that actually create hormones so our liver yeah no exactly i was just reading something earlier and it was saying the exact same thing like um our period goes like has a direct link to our endocrine system and our liver mm -hmm. and it's like that makes total sense when you look at it um when you take a step back and you're able to like look at it that way yeah so, yeah to support it and and that's the thing right is to like support it in like all of these like building blocks way building block of ways so that your body can be in a homeostasis environment you know you don't want to just yeah i have cramps so let's do something for like my uterine wall or my whatever my back hurts or something for my back but it could be stemming because you have a headache you know and you're not like addressing that first so yeah it could so be stemming because you have components. you have a cloggy liver and you need to like fix that before you can yeah understand why you're having you know pain or you're why you're not having your period why your period's coming every few right i mean that right. could be a serious liver issue instead of right you know and that's something so important to talk about too you know because like again like having a period is looked at like such a nuisance and so when women don't have their period they're like oh i lucked out you know i don't have my period i only have my period a few times a year and it's like whoa like that's a huge sign that like something's like really not like working properly you know like you said it's like our vital life force so if that's not showing up in the way that it should there's definitely something else going on there yeah totally and yeah. um that made me think of or it reminded me of something that i really believe has healed my womb in so many ways is not speaking of it in such a shameful way like it's really yeah. sad to me that i mean not so much in our community but in a lot of places the only thing you hear about periods is that like oh I have my period like oh you know yeah. does anybody have a tampon like god damn it i'm bleeding and blah, 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 whatever <laughs> and it just breaks my heart because it's like that's the only way you talk about it and it's causing so much shame to be built up there yeah. and i really believe yeah. well um what's her cammy mcbride cammy mcbride is an herbalist um yes. she said these words that really stuck to me once that it was that pain creates blockages or shame creates blockages and blockages create pain. So, wow. I mean, there's a direct link there that when the only thing that you're giving to your womb, to your yoni, to your pussy, to your vagina is <laughs> bad words and shame, like it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna add up. And so yeah. talk, 
talk about, um, you know, talk about it with a lot more love and, and care. And I think that that for me has healed me in so many ways because men yeah. do not hold a lot of shame. They're like most women do because all we hear about is that it sucks. And it's like, we should, we should take this pill so that we don't get a period because that would right, be, awesome, right? right? No. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Like I totally agree from like the age that we're like, I mean, from like a young, young age before you even have your period, it's like talked exactly what you said. Just talked about like negatively and like when you get it at a young age, you're made fun of and it's one of those things you want to hide. And yeah, there's just, there's too much came around and I totally agree. And I love those words. That's, such yeah. a nice thing to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit about like some other symptoms that people might be getting that are annoying, even though we know that like it's bad to long term cover up your symptoms, but we all know that yeah. symptoms of our menstruation can be totally debilitating. And yeah. we don't really live in a society anymore where we can go and sit in a tent for five days at a time. Well, that right. would be awesome. We don't. So some herbs like for actual physical symptoms, like we talked about dysmenorrhea, pain. Um, yeah. Something that happens to me is mood changes. Like, so I started bleeding yesterday. Two days ago, I had like a breakdown in front of my family. It was like, nobody talked to me. I'm like crying. <laughs> um, <laughs> And yeah, there's, there's obviously herbs that I can take at that time. Like, mm. um, yeah, like nervine. So skull cap and passion flower. Yes. yes. Oh yeah. Those are really awesome. Yes. And liver bitters because liver is, is also processing emotions and mm -hmm. hormones. So the liver and the nervines for those like serious mood changes are awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I love that you mentioned that. And like even using um, like adaptogens during this time is like really powerful. Like Eleuthero, I love using Eleuthero during this, like mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Um, and although it's not, um, it's more of like a nervine, but chamomile, like I love using chamomile and like, like, oh gosh, she's just like one of my favorite plants to begin with. But just like, again, one of those like herbs that are just like so sweet and pretty and like I just want to be with that you know mm -hmm. so, totally yeah yeah um, um oh another one that's good for or to use liver bitters for is cravings so yes, I that's I, great. yeah um yeah. oh uh, an interesting little thing I know I told you this is that if you're craving chocolate a lot when you're menstruating or around it, it could be a sign that you're craving actually magnesium because there's magnesium in chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, taking bitters when you have crazy cravings, that helps. And also blood sugar regulators, that's going to get to the bottom of it rather than just some covered up. Um, so like devil's club, like spirulina and kelp, that kind of yes. stuff. Yes. Yeah. 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 I love kelp like for that and like using, um, Again, just like really like calcium, magnesium based foods and stuff like sesame seeds and yogurt. And again, just like really like it's obviously easier said than done, but like being able to curb your your cravings with different foods and then that over like long periods of time just eventually cut out the cravings. I mean, it seems like insane to be like, I'm not going to have any chocolate on my period because it's something that's like so programmed like chocolate and laying in bed but it's like we're we're like intelligent women like it doesn't have to be like that like this is it you know like there's so many other options behind that so yeah totally, totally. Definitely, like, nutrition mm -hmm. um, yeah did you have anything I was going to talk about menopause but I'll like save that for the end yeah um a couple other things that I wanted to talk about for symptoms would be like water retention and skin problems. Those are two big yeah. ones. Water retention, um, herbs that would be good for that are like diuretics. So mm -hmm. dandelion leaf, nettles, um, yarrow, that kind of stuff to help actually get rid of it. And then of course, regulating your hormones. Like why, you know, again, getting to the bottom of it. So if you have low progesterone, 
that might be giving you um, water retention. So if you get really bloated or you get like heavy breasts, then then yeah, your body might be telling you like, yo, you have too much estrogen. Like you need some more progesterone. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, my tax, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And can you tell me how, um, how do you use Devil's Club? I never really use her very much. Oh, I, I don't. I, I'm sorry if I said that. I didn't mean to say that. Oh, don't. no, you're fine. Um, no, yeah, no, I've never used Devil's Club. Did I say oh, okay. That? Never mind. Maybe I heard I you. I meant Dandelion Leaf <laughs> if I said that. Dandelion. Oh, maybe that's what, I don't know. Maybe that's what. Devil's Club, though, like, Something, it's trying to speak through you. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Okay. Um, cool, yeah. Um, and what was the other one that you had said? Oh, skin problems. Skin so problems, yes. people who, who maybe get acne before, during. Um, elimination herbs. You know, moving, moving your lip system mm -hmm. and kind of like a diuretic too, like getting rid of it. So yeah. yellow dock, Oregon grape. I love Ocapio. Yes. Oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. Teal, if you get um, acne around your butt. Yes. Lower and uh, lower back. Yeah. 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 Ocapio. It's, so it, not, isn't that like, oh, that's just so crazy because it has such an affinity for like internally for your pelvic area and yeah. externally. It's like, Right, right. Well, um, I think the external thing is just speaking from the inside because if there's a yeah. lot of stagnation right there with your lymph, your lymph mm -hmm. system is like over overpowered with all of this nasty gunk and it doesn't, it can't get rid of it in other places. So it tries to get rid of it in other ways, which could yeah. be through your skin up here or it could be yeah. through your butt because that's where your lymph system is you know, is clogged. So that's where Okatia would be amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that you said that. I love Okatia. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> is she blooming right now by you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I saw her. She was like just blooming and I was leaving. I'm like, oh. oh God, she's like, the nice mountains are just like, whoosh, and then pink flowers all on top. Ah. I'll save some for you. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so maybe before um, menopause, we can talk about fertility and pregnancy, since that maybe comes yeah. before menopause. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, well, fertility, I mean, like, that one, once you get your your cycle really going and, and moving with the rhythm of the moon, that doesn't mean that you have to be, like, us right now I'm menstruating with the new moon <laughs> it's just <laughs> but you're going to be going in the set in a cycle like the moon. so you're not going to be 50 days apart or 20 days apart you're moving in a cycle and once you're there you're more fertile for sure so so using by using shatavari that one's mm -hmm. a really good for enhancing fertility yeah yeah I love that and shatavari is if men can use it too Burn. Yeah, yeah, for like reproductive health, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, something that I've never really used a ton of, um, but I know like Joanne's talked about it before, is evening primrose. Have you ever used it? I haven't, but I just processed a bunch of evening primrose oil. Um, I know oh, that would okay. be really good for in labor, but is that also for fertility? So it's actually not good for like prior to fertility because it's going to moisten the cervix. But what it's really good for is like um, two weeks before, and granted, this is like talk to your doctor and whatnot, but a couple weeks before you were to give birth to take, to start taking it, um, loosens up the cervix and everything. So that way, when you do have your baby, it's much easier because you're all nice and lubricated in there. Um, and that's, I mean, that's obviously why you wouldn't take it um, while you were trying to get pregnant or while you were pregnant, just because it loosens everything in there. Um, and yeah. you want to stay nice and tight, but it's a really cool herb for even like sits baths afterwards, like tightening everything back up and, um, having it back, like all the mucilaginous in there and whatnot. So, yeah, totally. I, I remember talking about this one now. I love this herb. Oh my gosh. Um, you yeah. can, 
I'm actually doing a project on it right now, which is interesting, but oh, cool. you can um, open up the capsules and put the oil actually on your cervix when oh, cool. before you're, you're menstruating. So you'll like take it internally that way and put it on your cervix and it will start to soften. And loosen. wow, I had no idea. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I also think that, um, after, after you do give birth, it's like a good time to take it as well. Cause it, um, enhances like the thickness of breast milk. Um, mm -hmm. so I guess it's like an amenagog in that way. Like once, or sorry, not a amenagog, it's galactagog. Um, after you do have a baby, it fattens up the milk and whatnot. So yeah, I've ever really used before, but definitely contraindicated in like pregnancy and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you just made me think of an interesting thing that I don't know if you've heard this story from Joanne. So we're talking about Joanne Sanchez. We're both mm -hmm. in her books, of course, but, um, shout out to Joanne. She, yeah. Shout out Joanne. You, you <laughs> <laughs> um, she told stories and then I heard other people tell stories about taking hops right after giving birth and it really um, making your breast milk production start like kick in. So oh, I cool. Like I had not really, that. Yeah, it's cool, right? So it's really common in um, Latin cultures. I shouldn't say that because I know specifically it's in Mexico. Um, so in Mexican <laughs> culture, it's common to, to give a beer. Um, and sip on it after you just give birth, which I think is, is funny and awesome. Like that's super yeah. cool. I and love that. This <laughs> here and there, and the hops in it really um, kickstarts your your breast milk production. And so now cool. you know that. And we might just take hops in like a tincture form, but I mean, you know, why not have a couple ounces of also beer? Also good in a beer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get that IPA. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Thank and of you. course there's herbs that we should stray away from when we're pregnant, but that would be a list of like this long of herbs, and I don't want to say yeah. that too, because I don't I don't think that we should be so scared of herbs, like, you know, people are like, oh my god, yeah. I'm pregnant, I can't take any of this and this and this and this, and yeah, definitely yeah. do research, but herbs and the earth are not supposed to be scary, you know, yeah. I would stray away from taking much in the first trimester, but um, mm -hmm. introducing some here and there, when you feel the call, you know, hit up your midwife, hit up your doctor and make sure it's cool. Yeah. But yeah. don't be afraid of herbs, you know? Yeah, no, I love that. And like, you know, there's so much leading up into like being pregnant too that like people usually take more precaution on, but there's that whole lead up into like having a baby where you're able to protect your womb and create this space for you know, this potential baby to be living in there for nine months and like take that time to be with your body, you know, take that time to nourish your, your womb space and take herbs to strengthen yourself, you know, like emotionally and physically because you're about to have a baby in there and that's like powerful as heck. So yeah. yeah. And don't be scared of herbs. Exactly. Just do your research, but don't be scared. There's yeah. Too much fear out there anyway. It doesn't need to be around plants. Right. Um, yeah. Well, if you don't want to get pregnant, there's two herbs that I am aware of. I mean, there's many, many herbs that I'm aware of that you can use as like an abort efficient kind of um, pregnancy release type of thing. But there's two herbs that I know of that are preventative in getting not pregnant <laughs> and not getting pregnant. Um, so one is Queen Anne's Lace. And that has to be harvested at the perfect time. So you have to really trust the person who's doing it or you have to do it yourself. Um, and you have to harvest the seeds right, right once it closes and chew on them or get them ground up and then make a tincture, but make sure they're ground. And you can use that every time you're ovulating or you can use it as kind of like a plan B type of thing. And what it does is just makes your uterus slippery so that the egg will become fertilized if it does. So this fertilized egg can't actually sit onto your uterine wall because it's slippery, so it'll just kind of fall off. Um, and another one is neem. Uh, mm. Yeah, so neem oil can be actually placed in or on to be a spermicide. And 
I have done a bunch of research and I haven't found anything that says that it has long-term issues, even though it like kills bugs. <laughs> um, but men can also take it internally to mm -hmm. be a temporary spermicide, which I think is awesome because women are far too often the only ones who are preventing births. And this is something that men can take. And that is fucking awesome if you ask me. Yeah. I love that you mentioned that too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just, it's not just our job alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And of course, once you um, understand, once you balance your hormones and you can try to understand your cycle more because hopefully it is coming in a more regular way and um, you can see when you're ovulating by different, I mean, this could be a whole different video of like actually understanding when you're ovulating. Yeah. Um, but look into that. <laughs> There's many ways you could tell. And you'll have to know that to take Queen Anne's Slice successfully. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in that, that five-ish day phase of you could get pregnant, um, then take your herbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. Awesome. Um, cool. Then I'll kind of start closing up with menopause unless you have anything else. No. Okay. Awesome. So, um, yeah, kind of what you had already talked about. So menopause is when our cycle is ceasing to exist. So our estrogen and our progesterone are both significantly decreasing. And this is just a really good time again to kind of um, get like re in tune with our bodies um, as time goes on from when we first got our period to now to at the time of menopause is, you know, traditionally a pretty long time, decades. Um, so at the time where we are entering our menopause phase, our adrenal glands are taking over because our hormones are going significantly down. And with our adrenals taking over, it then becomes all of their responsibility, which can create a lot of stress, um, fatigue, depression, irritability, all the things that can come along with menopause, which aren't like the greatest side effects, obviously. Um, but those are all the signs of overworked adrenals. So, I mean, it's a good hint to us that, okay, we're feeling this way. Now, how do we approach this new phase of life as women um, are continuing to be and grow and evolve? So, um, Rosemary Glasser actually came up with a really awesome, I really love like everything that's in it, but um, it's really like a uterine tonic and it balances the hormones, like all the herbs that she has in it. I'll mention in just a sec. Um, but things that are just like strengthening the uterus and applying like a general relief to the woman. Um, it's good at, like the herbs are good at regulating our hormones. So to not have just a total, we don't have like no estrogen and no progesterone when we go through menopause. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. So there's black cohosh, ginger, dong kwai, which I love. Oh, yes, me too. Yes, licorice, spirulina, motherwort, and then again, yellow dock root and wild yam root. So we have those, you know, other herbs that we were taking when we were younger, coming back to us and revitalizing us when we were older. Mm -hmm. um, and dong kwai is one of those herbs that's like the strengthener and the balancer of the uterus, providing a lot of release, um, or sorry, relief during menstruation and during menopause. So it's that like duality that we have with that. Um, and then I'll just kind of go into the symptoms of menopause, kind of how we did with having our cycle. So um, I think the most common one is probably like night sweats and insomnia um, is what I've heard like a lot of women um, have complaints about. And that's, again, just something in our bodies telling us that something's not being regulated. Having a fever is our body's way of telling us that we're, we need to get something out of us. Um, but it's also our body's way of regulating ourselves. If we didn't have a fever, you know, we would never know. So it's a positive thing. Yeah. Um, um, oh, and because of our hot, like our hot flashes happen because our ovaries have stopped working. And so it's sending this signal to our pituitary gland to then raise our temperature inside. 
with our temperature getting raised, our heartbeat is beating a little bit faster, which then causes us to naturally sweat. And so that's where a hot flash comes from. That's like the 30 second to five minute window of having that. That's what's going on in our body. Um, and herbs for that are motherwort again. Um, I really love sage for this. I've seen it work so in, in like so many versatile ways from women who are just like mildly warm to women who are just like soaking wet in like shirts at night and stuff. Um, I love sage for that. And then black cohosh again. Um, I really just, I love that formula. I think it's like so nice. Um, and then another thing that happens with people as they get older, but women specifically is osteoporosis. So we have women who have ended their cycle and they're getting older and now their bones are getting brittle. And now we're wondering what can we do for that? And again, it's not just one of those things. What can we do to make our bones stronger? It's what can we eat? And this is where I see appetite play a huge, not appetite, but um, food, I guess, um, play a huge role again is, you know, not eating so much high fat foods and not eating so much processed foods because really like we're at a time where our bodies like really are not able to handle that as well as we may have been able to. So to curb that would be, you know, oats, nettles, alfalfa, something really nutritive um, to kind of like densify our bones again, red clover, horsetail. I really love horsetail for the super nutritive. Um, but yeah, um, I think that it's just important to take a look at our diet, look at our iron, look at our magnesium, look at our calcium. Um, and it's not a scary thing going through menopause. A lot of women are afraid of it. And a lot of women are, you know, at 36 and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm hot. I think I'm going through menopause, you know, and it doesn't have to be <laughs> that scary thing of like, this is what I'm changing. I'm going through this thing. And it's like, we're evolving, you know, we're just going through different cycles of life. And that's like another thing to be, have like a sacred practice around, have a ritual around that, you know, be grateful that we've made it this far and we have so much further to go. So yeah. Um, yeah. And I think like, that's a good segue to, women who are in menopause, um, you know, it's still good to have an active sex life. Doesn't matter how old, how old you are. It's a very healthy thing. And also during this time, women tend to have a more like drier vaginal wall and herbs that are really good for this. Um, licorice, Shatavari, um, red clover and Dong Kwai. I've seen people use it actually internally. Um, and then sarsaparilla, um, Sorry, the red clover and the dong kai, like you can apply it internally. And then the sarsaparilla, the licorice, and the shatavari, you can take internally. Okay. Like yeah. in a tincture or tea form. Um, and I've seen more of like the application where you would apply it yourself work really well for women who aren't even going through menopause, but just something to like lubricate themselves in a more natural way. I've seen that oil work, like that oil blend work really well. Um, yeah. Do you have anything about menopause or? Yeah, um, just one little tip that I love mm -hmm. is women going through hot flashes, like that tea blend and stuff, super awesome, but you probably really, really don't want to take hot teas, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I remember Brittany saying this genius, Brittany's another one of our teachers. Um, Brittany, do you know her last name? Stewart? Mm, is it? Brittany Stewart? Brittany, oh shoot. Um, Brittany <laughs> of Desert Sage Apothecary um, has this genius idea that I love is to make a really um, strong tea and then put it in ice cube tray and freeze mm -hmm. it and then put the ice cubes in water and then you can be drinking your tea um, in a cold way because we might want that in the summer, but I know for sure women who have hot flashes are going to be wanting to drink hot tea. And this yeah, is a beautiful way to one. like cool yourself down and take your medicine that way. And it's fun, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Yeah. And ice cubes in general are like such a good herbal way of like getting popsicles and stuff like that. It's just such yeah. a fun way to be able to get your medicine. So, okay. Um, we kind of already mentioned this as well, but, you know, 
typically women when we're getting older, it can be kind of like this sad, heartbreaking kind of a thing. And that's natural, but it is also like just another stage of our life. So herbs that can help support us when we're, you know, feeling down about our womanhood and womanness. Um, like we said, like adaptogens, holy basil, really, really good for that. Um, ashwagandha, luthro, and then like your nervines, you know, like lavender, chamomile, and what was the other one you said? I don't know. I love lemon balm though. Passion flower. Yeah. Passion lemon flower. balm. Yeah. Yeah. Lemon balm is one of those ones that are like so good for any, like, I just love it so much. Like it's just such mood elevator. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I feel like we, we pretty much covered it all. Um, I mean, you know, we, we scratched the surface of it all. Yeah, no, I love that. Maybe I just want to mention quick that we did it is people in the beginning phases of their cycle, young women who, however old they are, um, going through puberty, you don't have to like be giving them Vitex because their, their cycles are off. Um, I would kind of stray away from giving them hormonal herbs and just, just more like supportive herbs. If they have acne, you know, just, just try to support them, to support their liver. Um, definitely give them a good ceremony into womanhood as you will yourself and your sisters and your friends, a good yeah. ceremony leaving womanhood, right? Or not leaving yes. womanhood. You're definitely not leaving womanhood. Entering. Entering <laughs> queenhood, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, just like a side note on that too, like that, like red raspberry is, has nothing, like it doesn't really play any role in hormones at all. So it's one of those things that's, that's why it's really good for women who are pregnant and aren't pregnant and are yeah. or in 40 and 84, you know, it's good for all of that. So yeah. I just, I love red raspberry. I had to shout her out one more time. <laughs> yeah, and rose, I think rose and red raspberry would be such a good yeah. combination for any age. Aww. That's how we started this video. That's how we're going to end it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so okay, cute. Nicole, I love you. This is fun. Yeah, I love you too, Abigail. This was awesome. I know it took like an hour to finally get here, but. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> okay, I am going to um, hit stop recording and I'll send it over to you. Okay, sounds good, Abigail. Okay, bye. And bye, bye. everyone who wants to watch this. <laughs> watch it. <laughs> bye.